In this video, I'm going to be taking you inside my head into a live head-to-head -head weekend league gameplay here in Madden 21. What's up guys, my name is Cody and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If this is your first time visiting my channel, my channel is all about helping people become the best Madden player they can possibly become. And so if you want to get better at this game, I just want to encourage you to click the subscribe button at the bottom of your screen. It's completely free to subscribe and it just allows you to be able to stay up to date with the latest tips and strategies right here on my channel. We upload videos every single day that can help you get better on the offensive and the defensive side of the ball. So make sure to subscribe, that way you get access to all of the videos. All right guys, so like I said, in this video, we're gonna be running some uh, trips tied in on the offensive side of the ball. On defense, we are going to be running, um, we are gonna be running nickel 335 wide. So I've kind of been uh, just kind of coming back a little bit to the trips tight end offense. I really um, enjoy the spacing of the offense. And so I've been kind of diving into that over the last couple of, uh, over the pretty much the entire week this week, uh, just kind of getting back in the lab a little bit testing some of the things and uh, and just kind of seeing how things work. So uh, it's been a lot of fun here, uh, right here, gonna go up to that nice little corner route. Now my opponent is running 3-3, three, three, uh, or I apologize, he's running 3-4. Um, anytime someone is running 3-4, 4-6 bear, 3-4 bear, you don't really have to worry about the linebackers unless they have the lurker ability. So if you look at his linebackers here, you're gonna see that really none of them have uh, abilities so we're going to be able to kind of stay rather simple uh, simplified a little bit here uh, with kind of how we're going to work here and just kind of take it you know one step at a time easy little reads right here for the trips tight end offense and as you can see right here I mean just relatively simple now I normally run the New England Patriots trips tight end um, I'm actually running the new or the Las Vegas trips tight end and the only reason I'm doing that is I just happen to have the Las Vegas book and I didn't feel like buying the New England book um, I would probably, if you were to ask me what do I prefer, uh, I would probably say I prefer the New England trips tight end. I think it's just a little bit better because it's got the U trips, it's got the bunch, it's got the A slot, but it's also got, um, it's also got the the quick base out of the trips tight end, which I think the the quick base is one of the better running plays in the entire game. Now, one of the things that you're noticing here is he's running a ton, and I mean a ton of just cover four drop. And so we're just kind of peppering the zones a little bit, just popping them. He's basically running, you know, heavy, heavy underneath zones. Uh, and so we're able to just kind of, you know, do, to take, take what the defense gives us here. One of my favorite runs that I'm actually starting to really like out of this uh, playbook is this trade Y flex read option. Uh, I think it's actually a relatively underrated run play here, uh, but it's just really hard to shoot this run. And it, you know, of course, as I say this, but you see here, like you get this nice little turbo out there with RG3. It's just something that, you know what I mean? Like I, I'll typically just come out in this, in the red zone, just to kind of see, uh, you know, what it's looking like. So real quick tip, I unfortunately had to receive the ball uh, at the beginning of the game, which is unfortunate. You guys know that I typically like to kick the ball. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set up some of my defensive coaching adjustments uh, during this extra point. Just kind of saves myself some time when I get on the defensive side of the ball to be able to adjust accordingly. And like I said in the beginning of the video, if you wanna get my trips tied in offensive guide, it's in the description. If you want it, you can get that for just 10 bucks. Um, it's relatively uh, inexpensive, but it's also super, super effective and in depth. But also, if you want to get my nickel 335 wide defensive guide, um, that's what I'm going to be running on defense. I'm actually doing a couple of new things out of this, kind of testing it out here in weekend league, seeing what it does against uh, a little bit of competition. And so, you know what I mean? Like, if you want to get the defensive guide, it's in the description as well. You can get that for just $15. But the reason I continue to come back to 335 wide is because it has the best coverage, or it has, number one, it has the best personnel possible. You're always, your players are going to react. The players you put in zones, the players you put on the field, they're going to react. I think that is so underrated and so important. You have really good pressure. You can make adjustments fast. But the biggest thing that I like about it is, obviously the personnel is probably the most important thing. The other thing that I really like about it is um, it can make really, you, you can make a lot of adjustments out of it relatively quickly. And uh, it gives you cover four quarters and it gives you cover three match. Uh, which are two of my favorite uh, favorite ways to play defense. 
Now, as you're gonna see here, it's gonna take me a little bit to get uh, used to having to adjust all of these players. One of the things, if you take a look here, I was running out of time, so I hit the pause button, and then I'm just gonna hit the circle button here, and you're gonna see that we're gonna be able to just kind of wait uh, a little bit, but you'll see at the bottom left that it's gonna give me an additional uh, 15 seconds just to make my uh, adju adjustments here. Now, unfortunately, I did not want Darius Slay there, so we're gonna put Dion there. Uh, my, my safeties are Mike Evans, and then I think Darius Slay. I'm going to have to take a timeout here just to continue to get that personnel um, to be exactly what I want it to be. It's really important to me. I'm willing to, I'm, I'm always willing to lose a timeout uh, to get that accomplished. Uh, I'm going to be using Sean Taylor. Uh, talked about this a little bit, but I am actually running a 25 um, out of 50 49er and 25 out of 50 uh, Washington theme team. That's kind of what I'm rocking right now. Uh, and so far, so good. So anyways, oh, looks like we've got a, a runner here. He's going to be coming out in the uh, in in the goal line right off the rip here. Um, so this is going to be a fun game. I can already tell. A little power roll right off rip. And we're just going to have to trust our run defense. Honestly, I don't have a ton of reps against this, this style of scheme. So it will be interesting to see kind of how it goes. I know this is tough. I played it once and I had a hard time stopping it. So, you know, the biggest thing is kind of being um, a little, if he continues to stay in that, as you see here, he is going to continue to stay in that. I'm going to put my curl flats on 25. And the reason why um, is just so that I can kind of protect a little bit uh, against the tight end crossers. So you're going to see here, we're going to do that. And then we're going to use a three rec. And this is, this is the best defense that I know on how to stop this so we'll see how this does but it looks like he's going to definitely want to like chew some clock um, do a little spin move and that's kind of bad run do you, run stick by him i mean he had pretty good opportunity there um you're going to see this is a completely different style of defense this this formation forces you to have to play a completely different style of defense than what you're used to playing and that's a good thing. I mean, it's a good offense for that reason. And so I'm just going to have to be super disciplined here uh, and uh, and just kind of try to try my best to contain this. Um, here, a little counter run, a little jukebox. Oh, and he's in the open field. And <laughs> see, this is what happens with this thing. Um, man, that's just so frustrating. So basically, he had to do absolutely nothing for his seven points. Um Oh, uh, that's just so frustrating. I've actually thought about like if and I, I haven't I just haven't labbed a ton of defense for this because I really haven't seen it. Uh, I've only seen it like once and it was like sprinkled in. So I'm going to have to lab some defense up for this. I think off the top of my head, like I want to say the big nickel would be fine. And we'll probably shift to that if he continues to run this. That'll be like our first thing that we'll shift to. And then if the big nickel's not enough, then we're going to have to look at either going to like the 4-4 split or even potentially coming out in the goal line itself um, to try to shut this down. Because we can't, you can't just allow somebody to run and run and run and run and run. Um, they're going to have to pass. And we kind of contain the run. I just had a really bad run stick or run, run D user, I think, too. I didn't get adjustments off. So just kind of not a good, I mean, had a couple, two, I mean, the first two plays were okay. And then the third one, I mean, he just broke it. So this is not going to be a, a blast of a game, I can already tell. Uh, this guy is going to be a little bit of a clown on offense. So we'll see what we can do to stop it and shut it down. But anyway, uh, back to us on offense. So when you're playing a runner, it's really important. You, It's really important that you don't, like, push yourself. Like, because of your frustration, that you, at least for me, because of the challenges of playing a runner, especially one that's good, um, you've got to be careful that you don't run yourself out of the game. I think that's something that, you know, run-based offenses do really well is they really just put a lot of stress on you as, you know, kind of a, an offensive player to keep scoring. Right there, that was bad by me. I should have just taken what the defense gives me. And here I did the cardinal sin of trip side in. This is exactly what I talked about, I think, in the opening line of the video. Do not no huddle. Um, I just don't think that out of bunch, no huddling is not a big deal because you can no huddle and flip and you can move relatively quickly. Um, in trips tied in, you can't do that. Um, it's just not It's just not an option. So you just need to be careful about that. And uh, I need to make sure that I don't do that anymore. So 
anyways here and I'm just gonna try to kind of like take what the defense gives us here easy little route to the back and you know honestly we're I mean he's running a lot of like cover three cover four so I'm actually gonna shift over here into I'm trying to think what play I'm gonna go to I'm probably gonna go to the play inside cross if I can get to it I can find it. there we go inside cross Okay, um, so I'm just going to try to like, try to hit this post over the top. We'll see if we can or not. And we're just going to check it down to our hitch. And that's that's the beauty of the trip side. And again, this is, this is probably one of my favorite reasons, my favorite um, adjustments when I run this offense, or favorite just things about the offense, is just how well the spacing really is. Um, it's just really, really good spacing, and um, it's, it, it, it is honestly very similar um, to running a little bit of a spread offense. So here I'm going to go with double crossers, double drags um, on this left side here. Nice little dot to Isaac Bruce, X-Spot doing its job once again, and that's going to give us a first down. So like right here, um, because he's running so much cover three, I'm gonna run, this is where I talk about like, it's really, really important to just kind of like, actually think about what you're gonna do. Uh, but like right here, we're just gonna kind of keep it really simple. Just take our hitches. Unfortunately, we get a little swat. And the thing about trip setting, again, I keep saying this over and over again, but I think it's such an important point to emphasize. You wanna make sure that you are going, you don't wanna run yourself out of it, man. You, I have been so guilty of that in this offense in the past where I've tried to just do too much with one play. This is a dink and dunk style of offense. This is a spacing style of offense. Like right here, you're gonna see, um, it's likely that he's gonna be running some man-to-man -man coverage. So we're gonna use a little bit of a motion snap here. Um, just kind of like give him something to have to think about. And he goes to the corner. So we're gonna take the drag. Like that's the trip tight end. It's, it's all about being methodical, being, um, being simplified, um, but also being very well spaced, well organized. That's, that's what it is, you know. Um, the gun bunch is like speed. It's all about fast pace. You know, no huddle, no huddle, no huddle. Catch them in a quick snap and bomb their cover three. Trips tight end is not exactly like that. Uh, trips tight end is much more methodical in its approach. And I actually enjoy that. So um, you've got to kind of force yourself a little bit, especially if you've ran a lot of bunch tight end or bunch like I have, to kind of slow down a little bit um, and just kind of, you know, be a little bit more intentional about your movements when you're on offense because if you're not careful you'll literally run yourself out um which is not a good not a good thing okay so right here um i'm kind of anticipating cover three on this third and one um so what we're actually going to do is we're going to motion this uh isaac bruce over now we do have to kind of watch and he does go to man i think and we're just gonna trust RG3, we gotta get down. And that was actually kind of a little bit of a, I mean, that was okay. Um, okay, so he, I don't even know what he did. I think he made some different types of adjustments, but uh, ended up being man coverage on Randy Moss. So we'll have to watch. And you see, you probably notice here, he has shifted his defense. So like what he was running, um, he was running um, like three, four odd. Now he's back in that three, three, five wide. So we've done something right. Uh, right here, we're just gonna scramble out and just, just run out of bounds. All right, second and 12. This is probably a good time for the play verticals. We're gonna try to hit the, let's see, I'm trying to think of what I wanna do here. We're gonna run the wheel route here. And we're gonna run with a streak. Let's see if we can't get this tight end open. And that was unfortunate. I think we almost got intercepted. I don't know if we got matched. Was he in match coverage there? Yeah, he's in some kind of Tampa 2 match, kind of. Okay, so third and 12. Um, this is this is like this is like where you don't want to be because again, we talked a little bit about it earlier, but just kind of the situation of the player that I'm facing because he's got such a tough offense. Um, you know, I just got to be really, really intentional. So anyways, right here, we're trying to hit, um, 
Let's see. We're going to see if we can get this tight end open. I don't know if we can or not. Um, nope. Use a rush off the left. So good defense by my opponent. Now he's going to have a minute and 13. The other thing, though, and this is the thing, he does get ball at halftime as well. So that's the, you know, that's kind of the double-edged sword, I think, of, of uh, you know, getting the ball first. So he's going to be able to come out out of halftime with the ball. So we really need to get a stop. Um, he's, in, in my opinion, he's kind of in a really good spot. He's got a minute. He's got two timeouts. He's got a really tough offense to defend. Um, just, I mean, just coming out and just power running is going to be hard to stop. We're going to try to contain it and get to halftime and then kind of see what we can do. Uh, I might shift to some big nickel. I'll probably stay in 335 wide just, just because um, we're just trying to contain him and get to half. So I want to see if I can maybe get a, a little bit better of a gap shoot um, against that with the 335 wide. If I can't, then I'm going to need to shift over to this. I saw this offense a little bit in the Madden Classic uh, that I competed in, but uh, this is, I mean, this is, it's its definitely become mainstream at this point. There we go. That's thats the kind of the, that's kind of the gap shoot I was wanting to try. Because um, if we can shoot that gap, that's really what we need to, we need to do. But you got to know he's going to keep going to it. And all right, it was okay. Good run, right there. Just not see, and that's the thing. Like with with a runner, sometimes it's really hard to get your defense set up. And so they'll like come out, flip a play, come out, flip a play, quick hike you, and you won't you won't have anything set up. He really likes these counter runs with a little double juke, so. Kind of, kind of have to watch that a little bit. A little quick hike crosser, and that could have been really bad for him. All right, so now we're third and thirteen. Whenever you're playing a runner, you can never, ever, ever just like throw away the possibility they're going to run the ball. But what you can do, so like right here, single back bunch. He threw last time out of this. We can kind of anticipate that it's likely um, that he is going to do that again. So we're gonna to go to this right here. This is my favorite defense for any kind of bunch type of set uh, in this game. And actually we're gonna to go to this little Mike Blitz three. And I think we made that tackle. So decent, so that's gonna bring up a fourth down. So now this is kind of decision time for him. I mean, if he, the smart decision is to pump this ball away. It does look like he's gonna go ahead and go for it. We're actually gonna shift here. Um, it's a really risky call on our side. We really have to watch this right side. He is going to go bunch, so we're going to deep half on that side. And actually, we're just going to do this. Got our adjustments in. Perfect. So we're going to shift to the quarter coverage. Um, just kind of watch. And he's out of bounce, right? We get the ball. That's perfect. Okay, so he just made a huge mistake. Um, this is what I was talking about. This where is a really risky decision by him. So right here, we don't necessarily have to go get seven. Um, we'd like to go get seven, but we don't have to go get seven. We have to anticipate that it is likely that he is going to blitz. And so what we're going to do is uh, we are going to just kind of keep it relatively simple here um, with just some uh, essentially trips tight ends version of PA boot over, right? So we're totally expecting pressure and we're just going to roll out and we got the crosser open. Can we get our feet down? That's a huge touchdown for us. And that's exactly what we were looking for. Um, and we're going to be able to go up by 10. That's huge. If you could ever go up by multiple possessions against a run first player, um, it's abs. I mean, it's huge against anybody, but it's really, really a big deal um, against a runner. So we're able to get that and able to get up by two possessions. That's absolutely crucial. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to get back on the defensive side of the ball and just continue to kind of keep the game, keep the game. Uh, in a good position. As long as we don't give up any of the, any more of those big runs on those counters, uh, I think we're going to be in decent shape. Now, right here, this is something that's a little trick of the trade. Some people would squib here. Some people, you know, all these kind of things. What I'm just going to do is is I'm honestly just going to try to keep it. I'm not going to kick it um, to the end zone. Hopefully, what I'm going to try to do is kick it like right over his up back 
to get kind of tempts him to return it a little bit um, and hopefully waste some time. So we'll see if we can get this off here. That's a, that's pretty good. Um, so like he's, it's too deep for him to want to like do that. So you see there it takes a couple, a couple seconds tick off and you know now we're in a decent position. Now real quick here again, we're checking our zone drops, just kind of making sure where we are. And I feel pretty comfortable with my defense to the point that I'm willing to sit in quarters or sit in cover three match, you know, in these situations, depending on what he does, depending on what set he comes out in. Um, if I was him, he's probably going to run the ball. Um, if I was guessing, but he might be doing some adjustments. We'll see what happens here. Um, so he is going to come out in single back bunch. So we're kind of ready for that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and accept that penalty, put him back to his own 17-yard line. And again, if it's if it's bunch or trips, or you know, if it basically if there's if there's if it's a three by one set, we're going to lean toward typically running cover four quarters or cover four show cover four show two out of three three five wide. If it's uh, doubles like spread or any two by two type stuff, then we're going to lean toward running. Um, then we're going to lean toward running, um, whoops, uh, cover three match. So like right there, we got out, we just need to make the tackle and that's going to get us to half. So we're not, a, I mean, we're not a bad spot. That touchdown was huge. Um, that touchdown was absolutely huge. And so now we're just going to need to, you know, kind of keep this game out in front of us a little bit. And so we'll see how we can see how we can do that. Again, it's just the biggest thing is when when you play run based players and you get in front of them like we are, runners will kind of by the nature of their scheme, they're gonna take time off the clock because they're running the ball every play. They're not throwing incompletions. They're not getting out of bounds. That kind of stuff. So it's not a great offense to try to come back from, in my opinion. So we'll just have to kind of see. Uh, what in, what ends up happening with this with this next drive? All right. So here again, I'm just trying to kind of just trying to kind of keep us run in front of us. If he does run it, and he is going to, there you see. Now we have a little bit of a numbers advantage. All right, second and three here. So yeah, if he's gonna stick with this misdirection play, um, you know, three three five is all about finding the the gap shoots. Like right there, we can kind of get up field like that. That's perfect. And now we've got him uh, kind of where we want him. Now he does have ten carries for hundred yards, but since that first like seventy yard run, he's really only averaging probably about three to five yards a carry which is still pretty good, but it's not good enough for him to rely on the run. Like he, he he's probably not gonna run the ball here unless he shifts back to goal line. Um, it looks like he's gonna stay in that bunch, uh, which which we would probably prefer to, to face that run. So we'll see here. Um, okay, good run by him. And that, that might bring up a fourth down. If it does, we're gonna, okay. Uh, no, it doesn't. Okay. We're gonna send a little bit of pressure here. Because you gotta think he's gonna be throwing it. We're gonna to try to just use our rush the A gap. Yep, get right up there just like that. That's exactly what we wanna do. Whenever somebody runs under center, this is the biggest reason why uh, people should not be running under center in this year's game. Um, you will get user rushed if you don't have your pass protection. And so right there, he's gonna to try to quick hike us with a run. Actually did a pretty good job. Um, Le'Veon Bell fighting. But that little that little quick user rush kind of puts in the back of his mind. This is why I like three three five wide so much. Um, it puts in the back of his mind like, oh, he can, you know, he can come get me at any point. So uh, here we're gonna try a different shift here, just because he's really liking this counter run. We're gonna try this shift. Um, it does look like no nope, little counter run. We're trying to just get out there, help contain it, and that's gonna bring up another fourth down situation. Fourth down and three. And if he comes back out in a single back bunch, we're probably, we're not in a position. So here you see the shift. So now he's coming back out in goal line. Um, this is where um, you kind of trust. 
you kind of trust this. And there's that play action. That's what I was worried about. Good call by him. That's exactly what I was worried about right there. Good read by him. Good call. Uh, the play action. I, I should have uh, I should have been a little bit more prepared for that just based on the situation, but uh, didn't do that. And now we're going to shift back into this cover three. Now, I really like this against this formation here. Just as long as we make the tackle, kind of keep everything in front of us. And again, you look at the top here. If you, if you take a second uh, and look at the top right corner of your screen, you're going to see that, you know, the clock is definitely ticking. Um, you know, so there's, that's what we're looking for. And there's the cover three match doing exactly what we wanted it to do against a double set. It makes it darn near impossible to pass when you're in a two by two. Um, very, very nice right there. And now we're gonna shift into the quarters. Um, quarter set right here. Um, just a simple little two man rush off the left. Um, and that's good defense. I mean, that's we're okay with that. We're okay with that right there. Uh, now right here, this is a little risky. I probably shouldn't call this but I kind of have already committed to it. I'm trying to really, yep, and oh man, we almost got him too. That was a, kind of a hit or miss, but good read by my opponent. This is why I talked though about, if you look at that, he's, it took him most of the third quarter to score. So, you know, we've been playing pretty decent on offense um, as far as like being able to move the ball. I wouldn't say that, you know, we've just been glitching in and scoring in one play every time. But we've been playing strong enough on offense that we can just simply try to get a couple first downs on this next drive and hopefully pull out this victory uh, right there. That was kind of why I shouldn't have called that. I, I should have played safer. Um, I got a little bit risky. I think it was, you know, that's that's something that's probably a little bit of a mistake. I probably should have just played a little bit more conservative uh, just based on the situation, right? He's down by two possession, force him to work. You know, I got burned for a touchdown on a – my two players ran into each other and fell down and got burned for a touchdown. And, you know, that's just not, uh, not a great, not a great feeling. So anyways, uh, we've got seven seconds. So a lot of people, you know, talk about play calling a little bit here. Um, you know, most people are like, well, you should probably start with a run. Well, when you only got seven seconds, you know, the time is the, the clock's not going to stop ticking. Um, so like right here, we're just going to take our check down and just get as many yards as we can and in my mind, a field goal puts us actually in a pretty good position with this game. Um, just kind of based off how the game is going, I think that we can make it hard for him to score a touchdown. I really do. Um, I feel like our defense actually has been right there a couple times, but we just need to finish this out. So anyways, just going to step up here, right there, taking off with RG3, just kind of keeping it simple. And again, uh, one thing that we need to make sure that we do in these in this type of situation, you need to make sure that you're playing on conservative. Uh, it's a little thing, but it makes a big difference. And I'm gonna go to drive post right here. This is uh, one of my favorite plays uh, for this type of situation. I'm actually gonna maybe shift out of that. I'm gonna go back to X spot. And we're actually gonna use a ghost route to the running back here. Kind of watching. Just take our check down. Keep keep the clock moving. Um, and now we're in a third down and two. So this is a big third down right here. Um, we can try to pop an inside zone. He's probably we really haven't ran the ball that much this game. We've got to kind of watch his defense. So if you if you look here, I think we set this audible. If I can get down into it. Uh, we're going to shift over here to the gun tray y flex it's a really quick audible but it's a little bit better of an inside zone in my opinion and see there we're able to just kind of shift over into that area and just make a nice, nice little quick adjustment and we're able to get that first down which is which is really really big i'm actually going to make a couple of things here just put the make sure that i have the ability to be able to kind of get to um, a couple different styles of runs that i might want to use down the down the pipe in this because really one first down well, we're kind of getting to the point where if we get a couple more first downs, we're going to be able to win this ball game. So offensively, this is where Trips tight end really is, I think, one of the better offenses um, because you force them to have to really um, adjust. So like right here, we're just going to – actually, we're going to fade square just to kind of test him a little bit, see if he's running some really underneath stuff. A nice little dot right there at Reggie Bush. And that's 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 actually probably best case scenario for my opponent but it's okay one of the things that i really like to do um whenever i'm in a situation like i'm in right now 
is I'll actually be I'll actually put tight ends out here at receiver. Um, this is going to allow me to audible down if I want to. I'm going to put um, I'm going to put Derrick Henry at uh, like the slot right here. Just a quick little slot. The reason I like to do this is because this kind of gives um, the illusion that we're in this, and then we can kind of shift down into this right here. We can still pass the ball. We have good tight ends that can catch. Um, you know, but again here, he's coming out in more of a pass based defense. So we're just going to you know, check down to the run and that's a huge touchdown. That's going to put us in a really good position to be able to close this game out defensively. This is where, I, again, I come back and say, when you're a run based player and you can, and we, that touchdown before half was so critical because it forces him now on offense. Now that because we're not only just up by one possession, but we're up by two possessions. Now he has to press a little bit. He's only got two minutes. He's got three timeouts uh, to be able to score. So we didn't take as much time as we wanted to. If I was smarter, I probably would have fell down there. But again, we want to get up by that two possessions. The two possessions is critical because now um, he has to go the length of the field, score, and then he has to get a stop, uh, which is really hard to do in a minute and 57 seconds. So uh, defensively, we're going to be a little bit more disciplined. We're not going to blitz. Um, you know, I, I kind of feel like blitzing. You, you want to, you don't want to, you don't want to blitz very often in this year's game. That's just my opinion. Uh, some people would disagree with that. Some people probably agree with that. But the way I feel about it this year is, I just think that it makes more sense to. Um, it just, it just makes more sense to kind of keep everything uh, in front of you. The sheds are really, really good if they want to pass. So we'll see what he does here if he comes back out in that doubles. Um, if he comes out in any of that stuff, we're gonna kind of sit in our, our primary passing uh, defense here. We'll see if he, he might be just kind of done. I don't know, we'll see what happens. But if you get the 335 wide defensive guide in the description of this video, uh, we talk a lot about match defense, kind of how it works, how you can master it um, and things like that. So it, it, it should be rather, rather helpful to you. But here we're gonna run with a little bit of a base three-man rush here. And good route by him to the back. Whoops, 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 whoops. Okay, there we go. So as long as we kind of stand like right in here, we're gonna be able to force a one-on-one -on, -one on this left side, which is really, really important. Um, there's a nice little check down read again from my opponent. There we go, got our setup in. We should be good here. Yep, good defense, perfect defense right there. All right, so, and you see this guy, he's kind of living and dying by the doubles. Like when he when he really needs to pass, um, he's kind of in the two by two style um, set. Here we're gonna go with kind of two edge rushers, more of a little bit of a, a base pass rush. Shaq Griffin, a lot of speed on him. He's got 99 speed, able to get over the top and hang with Chase Claypool, Deadpool over the top there. Uh, so, so far we're doing okay defensively. And again, right here, we've got uh, a pretty solid little style of defense. And that's pretty much the only thing they have. It's like a little comeback route occasionally, a little out route or something like that. Um, that's the biggest thing that we, we kind of tend to struggle with out of like a spread two by two, uh, because those out routes are so far outside. Um, occasionally that outside third won't, won't play it as well as we'd like it to play it. But anyways, this is gonna be at fourth and six. I'm not gonna make the same mistake that I made last time. Uh, when I was playing this, uh, where I, you know, kind of went too much, tried to do a little too much defensively. We're going to be very balanced and very simplified here. Um, tight end drag, got the guy over there. He just needed him to make the play, and he didn't make the play. The frustrating part is he has flat zone KO and mid zone KO, and the guy threw the ball right into his zone, and he didn't make the play for me. So a little unfortunate there, but no big deal. All right, so now my opponent coming out in gun, empty flex. Now right here we gotta watch, um, gotta watch a couple things. Uh, but really the main thing is this streak here to the left side. We just gotta kind of watch this. Um, this is five wide. You know we can't ever you know dismiss five wide. Little seam route. I need my corner to play a little bit more powerful there. Now if I was in his shoes, I would kick a field goal as soon as I possibly could, and then try to get that onside kick and go with a little bit of a hail mary. Uh, this is my favorite favorite. Uh, defense for um, this formation right here. And I actually totally messed it up. 
trying to get my adjustments in here. I'm totally jacked up. Gosh dang it, I didn't get my adjustments off. Yep. And he threw it right where I, where I was trying to put my guy. So right there, my defense just got completely jacked up. It probably would have been a good time for a timeout. Um, to be honest, probably would have been a good time for a timeout right there. All right, it's a little bit of a wonky formation. I haven't faced a lot of this. Got to watch. Mm. Dang it. So good read by my opponent. Kind of a weird little glitch, little glitchy formation right there, empty bunch. It looks like he ran. I think that was the divide wheel play, which is a good play. Um, trying to think of what I could have done a little differently on defense there. I guess I just have to watch that seam. I kind of thought the quarter would get over there, but he didn't. He ended up matching the crosser. Um, so good good route by my opponent. But we've got 20 seconds. Now he's only got two timeouts. So uh, three runs in this ball game should be over. As long as I don't fumble the ball here, it, it, it should be GG's in the chat. Um, we're going to stick with that trips tight end. And this is why, you know, kind of set that up. So I got this trips tight end set, but I've got tight ends all over the field. I've got, uh, I'm on conservative. I've got Derrick Henry. I've got Reggie Bush. So I've got a couple different directions I can take the run. If he, you know, if I, if he just gives me a pass, I'll take it. But, you know, again, this just kind of forces him to, to play sound football. Uh, and that's kind of the, the whole idea. So like right here, you know, just kind of checking down inside zone. Probably expected a time out there. But again, we're just going to close this game out. Uh, this was a fun matchup. Pretty good game by this guy. I feel like he went away from that goal line scheme a little bit. I got to get the lab a little bit on that. That goal line scheme is super glitchy. So like right here um, is a great example. So it looks to me like he's in diamond 4-6. He could be in 2-4-5 odd. But I'm pretty sure this is diamond 4-6. So we're just going to come down, go to the power O, you know, just get some yardage. And, um, and now you see here 12 seconds. We could take all the rest of the clock. Really not. We could just quarterback kneel it out. But anyways, good game to this guy. If you want to get the exact offense and the exact defense that I ran in this gameplay, uh, you can get that in the description of this video. You can get the offense for just 10 bucks. Uh, my trip setting offense is just 10 bucks. And then my uh, 335 wide defense is 15 bucks. So thanks for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. And we will see you guys in the next video.